This is The Herd. Wherever you may be and however you may be listening, live in Los Angeles, iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, and FS1. It is absolutely great to be here today. And my friend Carissa Thompson, the rare pleasure to work with Carissa. What up, girl? Well, I mean, it, it's a reunion right now. I just want to know why we're so far away. Well, I didn't build this set. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I get that a lot. I didn't build this thing. It's called Carpenters, okay? It's great nice to, have to be you. here. Thank uh, you for having me. Oh, uh, it's great to be here. Um, let me start the show with this. I was gone for a couple days. Um, you know, I've always talked about this. There are three stages of being an icon. And when I say an icon... Um, and then this counts for our current president, this counts for business people, this counts for singers, comedians, sports stars. There's three stages to be an icon. Number one is, I'm going to show you how talented I am. Eminem releases an album, you're like, wow, holy ma LeBron breaks into the league, Kobe breaks into the league, Elon Musk breaks into business. The first stage is, I'm going to show you how great I am. You got a lot of energy, you're young, you make mistakes, but man, you just burrow through them. You're going a thousand miles an hour skiing down that hill, man. You are going a thousand miles an hour. The first stage of an eventual icon is, look how much talent I have. And then there is the second stage to the icon. And the second stage is the accumulation of titles and achievements and Emmys and Grammys. Now you start winning awards. Because after five or six years of showing everybody how great you are, ooh, he does good music. Ooh, he can really act. Oh, she can really act. Oh, he's a good business guy. Oh, he's smarter than everybody. The second stage for LeBron and Kobe and Jay-Z and Eminem and the great comedians winning awards. Your peers bestow upon you respect. So the first stage is look how funny, look how great, look how talented. The second is awards, critical acclaim, achievement. The third stage, though, and you think this is the best stage, but it's got problems, too. It's called the mogul stage. Now you've shown everybody how great you are. Now you've won your Grammy. You've won your Comedian of the Year. You've won your Oscar. You've won your NBA titles. Now the brand becomes number one. It's not that you're not still great, but it's easy to get content. It's easy to get lazy. It's easy to get bored. It's easy to get fried. LeBron James is in the mogul stage. Now, Justin Timberlake and Eminem in the last couple of months have both released an album. Neither one of them is being well-received. Now, why would that be? Because we know they're both smarter than they've ever been. They're more worldly than they've ever been. Uh, they are more experienced than they've ever been. They've got a greater set of producers and writers than they ever have, but yet both of those CDs aren't as good as their best early work. And why is that? Because they're not inspired. And that, my friends is the problem with the mogul stage. Kobe Bryant scored 60 in his last game. One last inspiration. He could have scored 50 and 60 the previous month every night. He needed inspiration. Taylor Swift was great. Now she's content. Mogul stage works not as good. LeBron James, it's not an excuse. It's a reason. When you move into the mogul stage, you can still be fantastic, but it is harder to be engaged. It is harder to be inspired because you got your money. You've shown everybody how good you are. You have your rings. You're now a, you're now a mogul. You're at the top of the mountain. You can still be the best guy skiing down it, but you need inspiration. And it's hard when you're rich, and it's hard when you've already checked the first two boxes of the icon status. I've always said this about comedians. Comedians come out and they show you funny work. And then they get on a TV show and they make a bunch of money. And then comedians start buying their third, fourth, fifth house. And they're not as funny anymore. Why? Because comedians are the little guys. They make fun of the rich and powerful. But what happens when the paradigm shifts? And the comedian is rich and powerful. Then they start lecturing you. They start telling you who you have to vote for or you're stupid. And they're not funny anymore. But then occasionally that great comedian can reel off a Netflix special or a Showtime special or an HBO special. And you're like, damn, bro, still got it. He's always had it. But he's in the third stage of icon, and that's mogul. And LeBron James, after 14 years being the centerpiece of this league, was completely fried. 
and he wasn't playing very well. And then the rookie GM, Kobe Altman, surrounded him with a bunch of young, long, athletic, fun guys. And you saw what happened yesterday. Here's LeBron's rookie GM. I think we're going to get rejuvenated LeBron James, and that's the key. Uh, this, this guy is so good, he dictates outcome. That was the hardest part for me, seeing him. And I don't want to say he didn't, he didn't believe in that, this group. I want to be careful in saying that because he, he's going to compete every night. He's going to try to get whatever team he's on to the finals. But I wanted to see a renewed sense of, of joy in him, and being around him the last 24 hours has been great. The icon is once again engaged. His next album is going to be great. All right, let me shift gears to this. This is the most ridiculous thing I heard. I can't believe this, but it made me laugh. For years and years, almost 15, New England's been the reigning dynasty in the NFL, but suddenly Philadelphia wins a championship, and now they're doing it the right way. Lane Johnson, a very good player, an offensive lineman for the Philadelphia Eagles, said this weekend, he said, New England's doing it the wrong way. We're doing it the right way. We're having so much fun over here. Those guys are robots. Uh, here's Lane Johnson. Let's roll the tape. He plays for the Eagles, and he has decided now Philadelphia's championship. That's the, that's the right way to do it. I just think the, the Patriot way is it's a fear-based organization. Obviously, do they win? Hell yes, they win. They won for a long time. Do I think people enjoy, can say, I had a lot of fun playing there. No, I don't. Right. And that's just God honest truth. You know, not to be reckless, but hey, I, I would much rather have fun and, and, and win a Super Bowl than be miserable and, you know, yeah. And yeah. Be, yeah, just win be, five Super Bowls. Yeah, win five Super Bowls. But <laughs> hey. Yeah. Yeah, they're not having any fun over there. You know, I think high five, when you're high fiving people, that's fun. Who high fives more than anybody in the league? Who wins more playoff games and Super Bowls than anybody in the league? Who has the second most touchdowns in 10 years? Who's high fiving? That guy, Tom Brady, that's fun. Gronk's a robot. He's no fun. I watched New England. They win 13, 14 games a year. Seem to be having fun for me. But now, but now, fun. You want to know who's fun? Babysitters are fun. But they're not grown-ups. Parents are. Grandma's fun, too. Grandma comes over. You go to Grandma's house. And she's baking cookies all day for you. But Grandma forgets her address four days a week, and she smells like Larry King. She's Grandma. She's fun. Not a grown-up, not a parent, not a dad, not a mom. You have fun guy. You ever go in Uber? You take Uber and you get the fun driver? Chatty, 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 chatty. Where you from? What you doing? Had a party last night. Had a famous guy in the back of the car two days ago. Chatty, chatty, chatty Uber driver. Nothing but fun. He loves his work. It's fun. And they're like, bro, you just, just flew past my exit here. I'm not going to Santa Monica. Okay? Going to the other side of the tracks. Fun Uber driver guy. I go get coffee every morning at Pete's. The more fun the baristas are having with the customers, the worse my experience. Oh, they just engage, small talk, everybody that walks in. Oh, no. It's like, hey, almond latte, nine minutes ago here. Hey, kabuki, guy over here needs a little caffeine. You're having a ball behind the counter. I'm miserable. I'm the customer. You want to have fun? Call grandma. You want to win games and matter? Yeah, Nick Saban, it's serious. They're having a ball at the University of Tennessee. I think they're on their 13th coach this decade. New England now is not the right way to do it. No, Philadelphia, those guys, they got it figured out. Okay, we'll see. They just lost their offensive coordinator, one of their play designers, their quarterback coach. When Atlanta lost Kyle Shanahan and Matt LaFleur, they weren't the same team. My bad. What did I say? I could barely hear me. Yeah, you can have fun. That's fantastic. But remember the movie, Remember the Titans? Denzel Washington, pretty good in that movie. Remember this scene? You smiling? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why are you smiling? Because I love football. Football is fun. Fun, sir. Fun, sir. It's fun. Yes. You sure? I think. So. Now you're thinking. First you smile, then you think. You think football is still fun? Uh, yes. Sir. Yes, no. No? Sir, sir uh... But it was fun. Not anymore, though, is it? Is it? No, not by now. No, no, it's not fun anymore. No. Not even a little bit. <laughs> no. Make up your mind. No, no. Think. Since you're thinking, now go on. Think. No, is no. it fun? No, sir. No. No, sir. Absolutely not? Zero fun, sir. Go grab a Frisbee, Lane Johnson. Go to the beach. Have all the fun you want. Want to make a side bet that New England's going to be good next year? Gronk's having fun. 
But he also knows once the season starts, it's down to business. Football is fun when you're winning. Nobody wins more and more consistently than Gronk, Brady, Belichick, and the Patriots. Uh, Coming up next, what in the world do we make of Isaiah Thomas? And he was beloved, and then he went to Cleveland, and that was a grease fire, and now he's a Laker, and 0-1-1. What to make of Isaiah Thomas in that situation? Chris Long of the Eagles joins me in a little over an hour. Doug Gottlieb here in 15 minutes. Valentine's Day is a couple of days away, but if you've been putting that off, and by the way, for the first year ever, I memorized Valentine's Day. It's Wednesday, February 14th. Got Christmas down two years ago, 4th of July last year. I have memorized Valentine's Day. Work on St. Patrick's <laughs> Work on St. Patrick's Day next. Oh, come on. Good hell. Well, how much capability do I have here? <laughs> Chris, I've got Valentine's Day down. Roses are great, but why not, why not edibles, food, cherries, berries? These are fantastic. We've had them all over the office. Rich, fresh strawberries dipped in dark chocolate, white chocolate, milk chocolate, nuts, signature swizzles. Go to berries.com. Code heard. B E R R I E S. I I assume you can spell it, but I'm here to help. B E R R I E S. Berries.com. Code heard. 20% off if your order is over $29. Berries.com. Code heard. Cool B. 